Welcome to Career Journeys, a series of videos by the Consortium for Public Education. Here we explore the career experiences and pathways of professionals from a wide variety of careers to help you think about the skills you'll need and the paths you might take after high school. Hi, I'm Sarah Brooks with Program Director for the Consortium for Public Education, speaking with Miriam Stanusi here today, who is the Project Manager and Senior Geologist for Tana Environmental. Thank you for joining us today, Miriam. Thank you for having me. So first things first, can you tell me about Tana Environmental and your role there? I do environmental work. So I'm a geologist um, and manage some projects. And usually that is everything from doing proposals and budgets to doing the actual field work and uh, invoicing, dealing with clients, meetings, everything from A to Z. And the work that we typically do is as simple as possible. It's to make dirty water and soil clean, which there's a lot involved in that, obviously, but that is the most straightforward way to, to go about it. My company is a small 8A company, which means it's minority owned. And uh, we're actually owned by the St. George Tana tribe in Alaska. Um, but we work out of, we're actually spread all over the United States, but there's not that many of us. And a large portion of them are in Denver. I'm here in Florida. We have some in St. Louis, some in California. So as a project manager, lots of organization running projects, and as a senior geologist, since you seem to have a dual role, what specifically um, does that kind of look like? I'm a professional geologist in Florida and Georgia. I have the same degree as Sarah, which is a marine science degree. I took that degree and went into environmental consulting and kind of fell into that after college. And from our school, they really, everybody told us they had, you know, we had one of two options when we did geology, which was oil fields or keep going to get your education, keep going for your master's degree, which to some of us just was dollar signs and we didn't want to do that. So I kind of fell into environmental on accident a little bit. My boss at my first company really liked people that went to our school. And so um, I got hired there and worked with some other Eckerd grads and did a lot of field work, a lot of data entry, a lot of playing around in soil and sampling groundwater. Um, so we do a lot of work with, if you ever go to a gas station and you see like a manhole cover on the ground that's metal, that is a monitoring well. So that is what we mainly work with is monitoring wells. It's not drinking water. There are no fish there. There's no gold. We get those questions a lot. <laughs> so, so is that like a monitoring station to check essentially water quality? Yes. And gas stations are notorious for it. So most gas stations have underground storage tanks. And before the 90s, underground storage tanks are kind of just thrown in the ground. They put a few alarms and whistles on them. And that's it. But really what happens is over the years, think about a tank being in the ground for 70 years, it's going to start to rust away and whatever, fuel is going to leak out, a fuel is going to get in the groundwater, and wherever the groundwater is flowing, that fuel is going to go with it. So, and gas stations are just the best example of the work that we do is you monitor the groundwater. And when the contamination is in the groundwater, it's called a plume. It usually is just looks like an amoeba. Well, and this is the best part about geology is we have to sell what people can't see in geology in general. You're like, no, no, really, there are all these strata in the ground and there really is contamination. But you have to prove it through data and through sampling. And we do that by installing monitoring wells, taking samples either on a regular basis or semi-regular, whatever would work. And then you present that data in, usually on a figure, everybody likes pictures. Um, there's also 3D modeling that is now done. And we know we used to have to draw everything out by hand. Now we don't have to. What do you love about what you are currently doing? I have been working at, the, at, at one particular place for a very long time, but not the same sites. Um, but it's also nice to, when you work on a site for a long time and then go back to it and then like you get to close it out because it's clean, that's also very satisfying. But I've traveled a lot, not to fancy places, but <laughs> to some very interesting places. And I got to say my job, if I didn't have this job, I probably wouldn't have done that. And also when I was traveling a lot more and doing a lot more field work, being able to tack on like, you know, the weekends 
like in New Mexico, going to see our friend Joanna or uh, going to visit family or friends of friends or whatever in random places throughout the U.S. What are some skills that um, make you particularly good at your job? Organization, for sure. You have to be organized to do field work. It can go well. It usually doesn't. There's always surprises. But if you're organized in terms of doing prep work, like I can't decide I'm going to go into the field tomorrow just randomly. I have to prep for it. I have to make sure I have, make sure I have the right crew. I have to make sure I have the right equipment. Just everything from A to Z. So before I go in the field, every time I have a very long list of things that need to get done or equipment that needs to be rented, bought, what have you. Um, and that takes a lot longer than what most people think. But also the more I put into that on the front end and also with help from coworkers, then the easier, the smoother seem, things seem to go on the back end. Also for where I work, DOD, there's always logistics. There's not, it's not just one person you have to talk to. It's like five or six or different agencies that you have to say, hey, I'm going to be doing this work this day to this day. Is that okay with you? Or just to let you know, or there are certain places where I work that you can't go unless you expressly have permission. And so, and the same thing with even working on residential sites, it's like you wouldn't just roll up to someone's house and be like, I got to go dig a hole in your backyard. That would be, you would let them know. And flexibility when anything comes up. Projects where it's pretty much like, okay, you're ready to go in 24 hours and you're like, really? 24 hours? Come on. But being able to travel or being able to leave when I needed, when I needed to. Luckily, I now have local work, so it's not as big of an issue. So how can youth get involved in your work or similar work in their home communities? If you're interested in environmental science or environmental work, um, taking classes in it, there are now more classes than ever that are offered. There were not as many when we were in college. We did have an environmental science degree, but uh, it was more like a policy degree. And if there's opportunities for internships, definitely take them. I, as a poor kid, definitely didn't take any unpaid internships, maybe one. Maybe one or two, but not for very long. Um, and then also just not, I mean, you're going to take the classes that you're interested in, but also take classes that maybe are not in science or your field of interest and get that rounded out view because something that you learn in stats or accounting will probably help you at some point in uh, any field, really, and especially in environmental. And the environmental community for what we do is pretty small in most areas. There's usually a local chapter um, of environmental professionals. So if you look those up, they always do student outreach. So go and ask questions and yeah, learn as much as you can. So what questions should students ask themselves if they're considering a career in your field? I think the main question is, do you like to be outside? <laughs> and you don't have to do field work in order to do the work we do, but that's the more fun part of it. And that's the best part of it. And I always, I like my job because I have the best of both worlds. I get to go in the field and I also get to, when I'm sick of the field, I get to go back and then be in front of my computer and write reports and crunch data and do all that. So it's, yeah, do you want to be outside? Are you willing to deal with like changing weather conditions, hot, cold, or whatever? There are long hours, um, but it's a good payoff too. Again, you get to, do you want to see places you wouldn't normally see? And I do like people because you're going to be dealing with them. You don't have to deal with the public and or other clients doing this job for project management for sure. And project management, it's um, juggling a lot. And sometimes you might miss something, but that's what it happens, happens to everyone. What's one piece of advice you would give to anyone aspiring to do the work in your field? Go out there and try whatever you can, but also try to fail. And through the failure, you will become better or you will figure out what exactly you want to do. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. It's not for everybody. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, Miriam. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's lovely. 
For more information or to learn about other careers in the Career Journey series, visit our website and check back soon for our next installment. Thanks!